Hit it. Okay, so for top secret, um, we're gonna do a couple of videos. Actually, three or f we got a, we got a few videos. Yeah. So as you're lining up questions, um, we'll uh, we'll get we'll get to them right after this. So here's the first one. Um, this first one is a TFT sample that we just got. Hi, Lady, who is this? Hey, I am testing out um, the small little NTSC display. Uh, you give it five volt power, and then you give it NTSC in. Uh, and what's a better NTSC generator than a Raspberry Pi Zero? We just solder to these two wires here. I don't know if people remember this, but the Pi One at least had a TV uh, spot. So black and yellow wire to RCA, and then I'm just testing it out by um, displaying uh, some graphics on here uh, using the command line and uh, color and saturation look really good. So um, this is a little bit of a revision. This little button lets it flip around. Just testing everything is working great. Uh, so this revision will be in the store shortly. Next up, if you like these long cats, um, you're really gonna we like do. you're really gonna like these uh, stem connectors that we got. The long. Early data. What is this? Uh, I'm testing two things at once because that's what engineers do, right? Like why test one thing at a time? So first, I'm testing out this new Feather Huzzah ESP32 Feather. V2 with a uh, Pico module, which has eight megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PSRAM. So it's an upgrade to our very popular uh, Feather ESP. And I'm also testing these really nice Stemma QT cables uh, that are extra long. I got this uh, like 200, 300, and 400 millimeter long cables for Stemma QT. And here's the cool thing. Uh, we saw this neat tweet that referenced having the data lines interleave with the power lines to reduce crosstalk. So uh, we tried that out for these um, nice, um, you know, uh, PVC covered cables. And uh, so far these work really great. And then they're quite nice cables. So we'll have these in the store soon. Okay, then we have three updates on the floppy stuff that we're doing. So if some of the folks are asking floppy questions, these videos might help you. We're gonna play one after the other after the other. Don't worry, they're only a minute each. So see you on the other side. What is this? These are my floppy socks, and these are some Mac 400K, 800K, and another 400K uh, floppy disk. So back in my floppy game, and you know, we've got the Windows diskettes all working really great. You know, those are all good uh, MFM floppies. But you know, the real challenge is the DCR uh, 400K and 800K Macintosh floppies, because I'm a Mac girl. So, um, Working a little bit on uh, changing the timing of how we read flux pulses, I actually replaced everything with um, a capture peripheral. Phil B helped a lot with that. Uh, so we're doing capture peripheral and PWM waveform generation for flux pulses so we can get um, better precision and also just like better handle long pulses. Um, it seems to help a little bit with improving uh, reading the Mac GCR uh, fluxes. So you can see I'm reading a clean 400K floppy here. All those sectors working out. Hey, really, Data, what is this? Hello. Well, you know, we're still doing some floppy stuff. We're getting back into it. And a lot of people are always asking me, why don't you just use a USB floppy drive? And the answer is uh, you can't when it has this little board attached. But if you replace that board with this super duper floppy flooper, you can convert this 26 pin cable that's on a laptop floppy disk, which is what is in a USB floppy drive to your standard 34 pin shoe guard. So you could use it, say, with your grease weasel. Please support Emma Bear and pick up a grease weasel if you want to do floppy hacking. And then um, here's the board and I'm testing it with Flux Engine and it works great. So this is cool because this is another source of, um, you know, brand new old stock floppy disk drives that you can get and it will work with your standard 34 pin connector when you use the flooper. All right, Lady, what is this? I am making millions with Tom Snyder. This is a very early 1984 Mac, uh, Mac Plus, you know, Mac 512K uh, video game. It comes on a 400K floppy, and I've got 400K floppies reading quite nicely now on um, Flux Engine with my hardware. So I grabbed a flux of this, uh, generated a, a DSK, which is a standard file type, uploaded to Internet Archive, and I set up all these flags, which means up here, uh, you can click emulate it and it will actually load PCEJS. You can see my monitor is very dusty. Um, but this will load the uh, game diskette, 
and then you can actually play the game in your browser. And it was like a surprisingly well graphics made game for 1984. Um, so do check it out. It's uh, under Internet Archive under Make Dash Millions Tom Dash Snyder. And uh, what's cool about this, we were, we're checking this out. It's like a full-on, like, Magic Cap OS inside it's, of it's this. It's actually, like, a surprisingly good game from 19... This guy was very, yeah. very talented. Um, he did a lot of other stuff until uh, his company was purchased by and then killed off by Scholastic. Um, yeah, we, you know, it's a funny side story on this. Yeah. So we're reading the Wikipedia page, and Scholastic bought this company, and the... Uh, PR person, Kyle Good, is the person I talked to when I was dealing with Scholastic, when Scholastic accidentally took a Maker product and uh, from a Maker and made their own version and said they didn't, but they did. And I got it, and it, I was helping out Evil Mad Scientist Laboratories with this Bristlebot thing, and that same guy, because you remember a person's name. If you're in PR and your last name's Good, that's in, like literally G O O D. No, that was just what's so funny. I was it, like, it's him again. It, 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 like they're like the best PR. They had the yeah. best PR people in the world. Um, anyways, so that's a little bit of a, a, a look at that. And then um, I also have those socks I was talking about nice um, socks. in the in the section of our website. And then the new ones that just came in. New socks are uh, these. Let's put these on the overhead. Okay, give me the socks. Nice, freaking technical socks. Look, you always wanted Oracle socks, oh, didn't God. you? Oh <laughs> God. These are directly from. Uh, Larry Ellison. Yeah, that's yeah. his socks. Don't ask for his feet Only available are, in large size. Okay, and that's uh, top secret. Okay. Um, I was banging these questions. Yeah, we got some questions, and we got some answers too. Yeah. So let's uh, let's do some questions.